Nicion, welcome to Wiccan Wednesday. As you notice, here is my goddess Isis. I've been here today meditating on the great ancient mother, goddess Isis. Isis is my personal goddess, and my name and title of Lord Ision derives from my service to the goddess as Isis. Isn't she just beautiful? I just love her. She's wearing beautiful silver robes. She has her purple cord on, and she is the goddess of the Order of the Purple Cord. Many of you know that I belong to a, another religious order, a mystical order called the Fellowship of Isis, and that comes out of um, Ireland. It has no connection to the other Isis. This is the Fellowship of Isis, which is a pagan group. And the Fellowship of Isis honors the goddess Isis, and they believe that they call Isis the goddess of 10,000 names, which is one of her ancient titles. And it's believed that all goddesses that exist are in one way or another forms or emanations of the goddess Isis. Now, I happen to like the title goddess of 10,000 names for my beloved Isis because, you know, many times when I go to other pagans' houses or Wiccans' gatherings, I see and encounter other goddesses. And so today we're going to talk about another mystical, powerful mother goddess, who I think is an emanation of Isis. Now the goddess that we're going to talk about today is an ancient Egyptian goddess. The goddess's name is Heket, and it's spelled H-E-K-E-T, or sometimes it's spelled H-E-Q-E-T. Either way, it's pronounced Hecate. Hecate is a rather um, different sort of goddess, shall we say. Uh, for some people, her form is rather shocking and maybe even disturbing. But you know, I didn't have that experience. When I first saw Hecate, it, she just spoke to me and I've loved her ever since. Let me put some pictures up here of what this goddess looks like. Here is Hecate. Now, I know I just shocked a few of you when you saw her form and said, oh my God, she's a green goddess, a frog-headed goddess. Oh, come on, Bob, is that for real? Yes, Hecate is absolutely for real. The ancient Egyptians saw her as the goddess of fertility. And along the ancient Nile River, many, many frogs lived. And during the, you know, the, the spring season, many frogs would be born. And the Egyptians looked upon, you know, children and prosperity and blessings all connected. So when they would see a lot of frogs being born, it meant that it was going to be a prosperous year. It meant that they would have fertility in their own lives and many blessed children. And so the frog became a symbol of wealth, of blessing, of prosperity. The frog also is a sign of being the great mother. The Egyptians were well versed in the concept of an ancient mother goddess, for they had, as we've shown you earlier, Isis. They had Hathor. They had many other goddesses, Nuit, um, or not Nuit, um, the, the sky goddess, the mother night sky goddess. And so goddesses were prevalent throughout ancient Egypt, and Hecate was one of the most ancient of the mothers. She was one of the ancient primordial gods of the earliest of the pantheons, Hecate figures among the Egyptian peoples. The Egyptians even made temples to Hecate, and she was invoked during times of childbirth. And so many times frog-shaped amulets would be placed on the wombs of women who were in labor to ease their birth pains and to guide them and give them protection. Many people kept shrines to Hecate in their own homes, and they would have little frog statues to represent her. As you saw earlier, Hecate was shown as a human with a frog head, but many times she was also simply pictured as a frog. Either way, the goddess was seen in the frog, and it was believed that frogs were sacred, for they represented the very presence of the ancient mother goddess. In the more modern times, the witches of old 
were often shown in pictures and in art as having frogs around them. It was believed that frogs were one of the, the uh, familiars, the spirit guides of witches. And so witches and frogs are interlinked also in history. Now, of course, many people believed and back in the older times that witches, um, you know, would send frogs to do their bidding. For some people, frogs were considered evil signs, but for others, people saw frogs as harmless little pets of witches. Either way, the frog and the witch has been linked through, through many, many, many years. I also think that the connection between frogs and witches tie into the ancient presence of Hecate from ancient Egypt. The reason I say this is that it is speculated by historians that the goddess of the witches in ancient Greece was known as Hecate, and it's spelled very similar to the Egyptian form. It is known that Egypt and Greece interacted uh, in ancient times, and some historians and anthropologists speculate that the ancient Greek goddess Hecate is actually a form of the goddess Hecate, for they are both mother goddesses. And Hecate, uh, Hecate of the Greeks was a goddess of the night. The goddess Hecate is also a frog which is associated with the night. And it's be believed that linguistically there may be a tie-in between Hecate and Hecate. For in the Greek, it's spelled with a K. Now in modern day spelling, many people spell it H-E-C-A-T-E, but the actual original spelling is closer to H-E-K-E-T-E. -E. So Hecate or Hecate have very similar spellings. Both are mother goddesses and both are connected to energies of the night. I myself have always been drawn to frogs. I've always lived near creeks and kind of grew up with frogs around me. So I have a natural affinity and a connection to them. And as I got into studying Wicca, I became more fascinated to discover that frogs and witchcraft seem to be, you know, linked and forever linked. So if you want to explore working with the goddess Hecate, or if you want to explore the magic totem power of the frog, I might encourage you to set up a little frog shrine. So let's take a look at this. And so I've set up here a little frog shrine um, and it's not complex. So basically the colors that you want to work with predominantly in frog magic is the color green and also the color black. And it's interesting that black is one of the colors of frog magic because again this ties in my belief that the ancient goddess Hecate of the Greeks has a connection to the goddess Hecate because Hecate's colors are black and interesting one of the colors of Hecate is black so black and green um, and it's speculated, speculated that the color black could represent the great womb, the darkness of the womb from which life emerges. So I find it again fascinating that the ancient mother goddess has black associated with her and also the Greek goddess Hecate has black associated. And frogs also by nature are nocturnal, so they're nighttime creatures. So let's take a look at our shrine. So basically what we've got here is some frog figurines. Now you only need one frog figurine. If you can't get a figurine, get a little picture of a frog or a goddess Hecate. Now, as I said in ancient Egypt, the frog statue was used to represent the goddess. So if you don't have her in her human body form, you can have her also just in the frog form. So here are my little collection of frogs. I have one more I've been trying to find. I moved it somewhere while I was cleaning. I have a green marble one, but I'm, I'll have to show that another day. But as I showed you, for those of you who were at last night's show, by the way, thank you for all of you who came out. This is my new frosted crystal frog. And this is by Baccarat Crystal. Now you don't have to have a Baccarat frog. You can see the tag there, it says Baccarat. Um, but I happen to love Baccarat Crystal and I love frogs. So what a great combination. So I have a beautiful crystal frog here. And so you want to have a frog image and then you want to have a green or black candle and then water. 
Water is associated with frogs because, as you know, they're amphibious. They're born in water and they live near water and on water all their lives. And I happen to have a beautiful green glass chalice, which I think looks very, uh, very much like something you would see by the water of a pond or a creek or a little stream. And so a green chalice is also part of it. And I've put water in here. So you want to kind of uh, keep water on your altar to honor the frog goddess Hecate. And then a green candle. Now here are some of my other frogs. Let me show you. This is, this is another one of my little beautiful crystal frogs. It just shimmers. I love frogs. They have these big eyes that look at you. <laughs> and then here's a tiny little one. I, I got this recently. I thought it was a bakra. It's not, but it looks so similar to the big bakra. I think that's kind of like the baby frog. But this is a little tiny baby frog in frosted crystal. So we'll put that next to the mama frog. So there's mama frog and baby frog. And then I have a little tiny marble frog that's hand carved. That might be jade. I can't remember. And that's one I think is jade, actually. Yeah, this is a jade frog. So you don't have to have big frogs. You can get just a little one. But I happen to have a collection. I thought I'll put them all together and group them around the candle here. And then with my water. And then if you, you know, set the shrine up and want to use it, you just probably want to do a little invocation. So we would light our candle. We're already lit. And then take some water on your hand and sprinkle your frogs and say, by this water, I invoke life to the frogs. I invoke the ancient mother goddess Hecate. Come and work through these images and be present for us. Hail, ancient great mother goddess. Hail, Hecate. And if you want to, and if you want to, you can take your wand and also do uh, an invocation with the sacred pentacle. So you could say, here this pentacle I lay for invocation of Hecate goddess night by day. So mode it be. And that sets protection and seals your altar for your spiritual work. So this is just one way. This is not the only way. If you work with Hecate or Hecate or the frog uh, spirit, you can do this any way you want. But this is just one way that I'm sharing with you that I thought that, that you would enjoy today. So, so there are my sacred frogs and I have them with my candle and my chalice. Very simple. You know, I always say, keep it simple. K-I-S-S, -S, KISS method. Keep it simple, sorcerer. <laughs> So there you go. So there's our frog shrine, our Hecate shrine. Isn't that just beautiful? Look at the little frogs. This little baby I think is precious. Doesn't it look like that's the baby of that one? <laughs> I got them from two different places and they're, this is not a Baccarat, but it's a beautiful, it is lead crystal, but it's a different brand. But it looks like it belongs to that one. And my little baby jade frog and then the big frog. So there you go, guys. Hail to Goddess Hecate. Hail. Well, Tubies, I have so enjoyed sharing this with you. And I hope this has been amazing and fun and insightful. And I hope you learned something new today. So anyways, I encourage you, please explore the Goddess Hecate. Explore the connection between witches and frogs. And if you feel inspired, bring the frog or the goddess of frogs, the ancient mother god, into your life. So thank you for being here. I love all of you. Keep it here at Spirit Channel. By the way, help me out. Like this video, favorite it, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe. Be part of our channel. We would love for you to be here. Keep it here at Spirit Channel. We got more coming tomorrow. Tomorrow is Vlog Thursday. So we're going to go do something fun. So just come and see us then, and we'll be back here with you then. Till tomorrow, may all of you always. Oh, I almost forgot. Call me for a private reading. If you want to get on my schedule, I'm already filling up next week. If you want to get in next week, you got to call now. 703-825-3929. You guys rock. Love you. We'll see you back here tomorrow. So be here for Vlog Thursday. Blessed be.